Join us this week for another edition of You Have Real Estate with me, attorney Justin Clark, where we answer your question about is it ever okay to do a for sale by owner or is it always better to get a real estate agent? All just ahead on You Have Real Estate. If you have financial problems, listen carefully. I'm attorney Justin Clark. Debt creates stress. My firm handles your IRS problems, credit card debt, mortgage and foreclosure problems, and even student loan debt. Call me today for a free consultation. Welcome to You Have Real Estate with attorney Justin Clark. Welcome to You Have Real Estate with me, attorney Justin Clark. Whether you're a first-time home buyer, a seasoned investor, or just looking to upsize or downsize your real estate, this show is for you. Think about it like being able to hit multiple open houses all from your living room with free attorney advice throughout the way. If you have any questions during the program at all, I want you to give me a call. 407-205-0400. That's 407 205 0400 or you can contact me through my website as well www.youhavepower.com I want to talk to you about an important issue that really makes me nervous right now if you've noticed the rental rates here in Central Florida they're out of control but I'm afraid that some of us are are afraid to actually go check our credit because maybe we had a bankruptcy maybe we had a foreclosure back in 2009 10 because quite frankly most of us did And I'm afraid that you're going to go keep renting and paying someone else's mortgage for years and years and years when all you really have to do is go check that credit, go apply for a mortgage. And instead of paying someone else's mortgage through paying rent, maybe it's time that you can actually get back in the real estate market. Don't be afraid, right? We've all been through tough times. Look, in 2006, these mortgage companies were giving away mortgages to low employee people, million dollar mortgages. I mean, all it took was a pulse and a pen, you got a mortgage. So a lot of it, this was really their fault back in 2006. And we all know what happened here in Orlando and really the nation in general in 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, the market simply collapsed. And, and here in Orlando, we were essentially the epicenter in a lot of ways of this whole financial collapse. And don't feel bad. Don't feel bad about having to go through a foreclosure. Don't feel bad about going through that bankruptcy the lenders have really eased, eased up their, their qualifications for you to get a mortgage. So, yeah, in 2009, 10, 11, it was almost impossible to get a mortgage. It's almost easier to go pay cash. But now, while it takes more than just a pen and a pulse, of course, the mortgage requirements for you to get a mortgage and buy your house as, a pay, as opposed to paying these astonishingly high rental rates is something that you probably can do. So don't be afraid. Stop paying someone else's mortgage. It's time to try to get back into the real estate market. Again, if you have any questions whatsoever, 407-205-0400. You can also contact me directly, youhavepower.com. I want to bring on two very special guests here today. It's Shane and Tracy Croft. Shane, Tracy, how are you? Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us on. So you guys own a company called Croft Real Estate. What's it like being a husband and wife team? It's great. It gives us the flexibility in both our work life and our social life. So for us, it has worked really, really well. It's a perfect fit. It's like having a partner, but you know, we keep all the money in house and with the way our lifestyle is with our children, it is literally a perfect setup. Now here in a couple of minutes, we're going to show off a couple of the listings that you guys have. I know you focus, not, not only focus, but, but primarily you spend a lot of your time down in the Southwest portion of Orlando. Is that right? Absolutely. So when you, when you think about Southwest Orlando, what cities are you really talking about? Primarily for us, Windermere, but Southwest is typically what people would say, Windermere, Winter Garden, and Dr. Phillips. That's a generic description of Southwest. And Tracy, how would you really consider the school districts down there in that Southwest portion of town? They are fantastic. We personally have three of our kids in that school district, one at Windermere Elementary, two at Windermere High. Uh, Windermere High is a new school. They're opening schools up. This area is growing so quickly that they're continuing to open new schools, and we we have just loved everything about it so we have had a very good experience our clients um, tend to move to that area because of the schools so it's um they're great so shane when i'm looking for a new home obviously you know i care about the price but it seems to me that i really need to care about the monthly payment you know we're, we're really buying a payment because we only make a certain amount of money per month and only a certain amount of that can go towards the mortgage payment do you have any advice for how much or what percentage of your income should go towards your mortgage payment every month? Well, banks 
sort of figured that out years ago. I, I used to be a mortgage banker, so I have some qualification to say that. But if in round numbers, about 30% is where you sort of want to cap out of your gross income. So if I make, to make the numbers easy, 10000 a month, my household income, maybe 3000 a month of my mortgage is about the right number. Right. Now, that can also depend on other debt you carry. If you carry a lot of other debt, you probably want to bring that down. No other debt, you might go up a little. Gotcha. Now, let's say, Tracy, I'm selling my home. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to list my home with you guys and, and really looking to sell it. I know that there are times where some sellers will go in and try to negotiate with you, the com- or any real estate agent, of course, the, the commission. And I think there are some dangers and pitfalls in really doing that. I mean, what do you think about negotiating this commission right out of the gate? You know, selling a home is going to be your biggest asset as far as you want to make sure that the agents you're using is are doing everything they can for you. Um, so as far as negotiating it, you, you want to go in with... Who is the most professional? Who do you think is going to represent your home the best? Who do you think is going to market your home? Um, you know, as far as negotiating the price, I, I don't think that that should be the priority. It, sh- I, it should be more focused on who do you think is going to do the best job in getting your home sold for the highest price. And using a professional agent is going to help you get the best price for a home, which will make up for any money you might save negotiating on a commission with an agent that's not as experienced. Got it. I mean, listing... You know, putting MLS, if that was the only job, well, anyone can do that, right? We, we could charge 100 bucks and do that. That's just the beginning of a real estate transaction. That really, Every real estate transaction is filled with pitfalls that people are not expecting. You know, 10 to 20 different parties between inspectors, surveyors, appraisers, et cetera, et cetera, and problems that occur that the person handling your transaction, representing you, has to have experience in the way to get experienced people is typically going to be on the higher end of the compensation scale commission wise we're talking to shane and tracy croft croft real estate if you have any questions whatsoever the phone number 407-205-0400 the website you have power Dot com. Now, I'd like to show off a couple of listings that you guys do have, okay? Right. And I, I know that that whole southwest part of town has some really expensive listings, but it also has some listings that, that can be affordable for all of us as well. Absolutely. Right? So, so let's start now. Let's go to your listing there on Ledge Mint Lane. Yes. What neighborhood is this in, Tracy? This is in the gated community of Glenmuir. Uh, and this home is priced at 649900 but this neighborhood does start uh, in the 300s about. So absolutely affordable. Uh, this home has is done incredible. The backyard that we're looking at right now wow. is an oasis. I mean, the size of the backyard, it's on a conservation lot. It's got an amazing pool. Uh, you still have plenty of space for your kids to play or your animals to run around in. Um, it is just a really, really beautiful backyard. I would be afraid to let my one-year-old loose back there. She's like a little Tasmanian devil. <laughs> my one-year-old. I have a six-year-old who is the most gentle thing you've ever seen in your life. I have a one-year-old that just like spins around all day long. And I, the, I was up at 3 a.m. this morning just hanging out with her. Yes. You know, it's unbelievable. But certainly a nice uh, pool area back there and, um, and, and playground the, area, too, for kids. And the inside is just as beautiful. They have upgraded um, everything in the home. Uh, she has a great eye for design, and it is just an amazingly home. Talk to me a little bit, Tracy, about price per square foot, because I know that's one way to, to really kind of compare listing to listing, apples to apples, so to speak. I mean, is there a certain price per square foot that I really want to be looking for? You know, it really depends on the finishes, um, what lot you're is, what the what the finishes are, what neighborhood it's in. So it's going to vary greatly even amongst Windermere uh, from neighborhood to neighborhood. So it's really more what they're looking for and what's most important for them. Um, this particular home is going to have n- nicer finishes um, than most of the homes in the neighborhood. It's going to have a bigger lot than most of the homes in the neighborhood. Uh, so may, th- you know, the price per square foot may be a little bit higher. Uh, actually, a home this same the same floor plan just closed recently for for a very similar price gotcha i know you guys love that area down there i know that's your that's your spot i'm sort of seminole county which is just the opposite it's actually easy for me to get to if i had a helicopter you know with all the traffic (laughs) yes how is the traffic down there generally i'm not saying from you know to get from windermere to downtown but just generally speaking when you're when you're riding around the the winter guard and windermere area how's traffic down there typically I haven't found it too bad. There, there's downtown Windermere gets a little slow. 
because they've tried to preserve the two-lane road. There's some dirt roads, things like that, to have it that old town feel. However, with 535 and the 429 and the larger roads, traffic moves really well. Right. What's going on in this downtown Winter Garden area? It seems like it's just blowing up there, right, with restaurants, bars, uh, farmers markets, and everything. Absolutely. They are revitalizing that area, and it is, it's is—it's amazing, uh, the restaurants and everything they've put in down there. Is a Koei still considered the southwest part of town, it, it or is would, that something a little different than would, we're talking it about? It would be a part of the southwest. Okay. But, I mean, there's some affordable uh, properties in a Koei as absolutely. well, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Gotcha. All right, I think we'll go to the next listing now. Now, this listing's not for all of us, of course. You know, you, you're going to have to save <laughs> up for, for this you, one. Just for you, Justin. But, uh, but I, wanted, I wanted to give you at home, uh, you know, the ability to really tour some houses today, again, from your living room. Uh, and, and, you know, see what really is out there and what these, these mansions really cost. Now, let's go to Louise Cove Drive. Uh, tell me about this house, Shane. So this is in the legendary community of Islesworth, <clears throat> where we, Shaquille O'Neal, Tiger Woods, famous names that we all know. Prices, homes start above a million and then go up to eight, nine million, uh, sort of unlimited. This particular home, uh, which we can look at a little better when we get to the front, is about 7,000 square feet, listed at $3.75 million. And it's on the water, on Lake Louise, which is the name of the street. You, and that is actually the same lake that the Alworth Club is on. So you can actually jump in your boat and be at the club in about two minutes uh, in a little boat ride and be at the club. When people are wealthy enough to afford a nearly $4 million house, are they just so rich that they pay cash or they get mortgages as well? Most are cash. Most are cash Most at that cash. price point, huh? Correct. Yikes. And when you go to sell a home like this, Shane, I mean, do, do the current owners really have to go over and above to really make them perfect before you even go to listing, or you kind of sell them as is normally? This this home is maintained in perfect condition. Uh, I love this question. Yes. Yeah. It's important. This the, They have not lived here in a year, and this home has biweekly cleaning service still, uh, twice a week lawn service. The home is staged with incredible furniture. There's a home manager that comes out <laughs> twice a week. Wow. Just to make sure it is absolutely perfect. Yes. Beautiful. What's a typical turnaround time if, you, if you're selling a house of, of this size, you know, over $3 million? Is there, do you normally tell your clients, look, this is probably going to take six months, it's going to take 60 days? What's a typical turnaround time for something like that? Now, I mean, you, you have to say it could be a year, but when homes like any price range are priced correctly in good condition with nice finishes, they will sell much quicker. So, but we also have a limited audience. You know, how many people are buying three to $4 million homes? You know, a few per month, it's consistent, but your marketing time can vary a little. It can vary greatly compared to say a listing under 500,000. Right. Awesome, awesome job. That is Shane and Tracy Croft, Croft Real Estate. Now, you guys are going to stick around for the real estate roundtable here in a few minutes, right? That's right. All right, awesome. If you have any questions about these listings or anything else we talk about at the show, call us 407-205-0400 or visit the website, youhavepower.com. Another very special guest coming up next, Jay Talenda with EXP realty a good friend of mine as well we're going to talk a little bit more about investment properties with with jay and and what really is out there in the market when it comes to investment real estate i know jay spends a lot of time down in the uh in the southwest part of town as well um and jay jay to linda how are you buddy good to see you how are you you know i must love you guys you're this is the very first show and uh look who i had here right (laughs) (laughs) All right, Jay, Jay Talenda. So tell me about EXP Realty, by the way, a little bit. I know uh, there's been a lot of Keller Williams agents who have moved over recently to EXP. I and mean, what's going on over there? You know, it's, it's just a different model. It's, um, it's similar to a KW model uh, with profit share or revenue share and um, just a sense of ownership to it and a culture. But it's it's KW on steroids, so uh-huh. uh, it's it's a simpler uh, format, it's a simpler formula, and it's really technology driven uh, versus brick and mortar. So they're able to chisel out a lot of the costs, the overhead that brokerages incur uh, under the traditional brick and mortar uh, setup, and. Um, it's web-based. It has resources for consumers as well as agents, um, team leaders, and, and ongoing uh, continuing ed. 
I talked earlier a little bit about how people are still somewhat scared because they might have gone through a bankruptcy, might have gone through a foreclosure a few years ago, and they heard all these rumors about, you can't get financing, you can't get financing, you've got to wait seven years to get a mortgage, and that's just not true, is it? It's not. I actually just had a client um, that had a short sale six months prior yeah. and was able to obtain uh, conventional financing. Um, Typically, it's two years, and if it's a Freddie or Fannie loan, then it's four years, but um, no, uh, that happens. It's, as you mentioned earlier on the show, that was very common uh, amongst most of the population throughout right. America um, to have those troubles you know, a few years ago. I know you don't worry much, or you don't work very often in the real, in the rental market. You know, you're not representing renters typically, you know, unless it's a friend or something, of course, but what is the rental market really like out there right now? Well, actually, I've sold a lot of homes to hedge funds oh, okay. uh, that then repaired the properties and held them as rentals. So um, the rental market has gone crazy. Um, and with the reduction of interest rates, it's really blown out of proportion. The rental rate versus a purchase, uh, a purchase mortgage and the cost of home ownership. So right now, it'd be a better time to own, uh, take advantage of the, of the rates where they stand right now. Um, and start building up the equity. It's a great time to be in the rental market when you're a landlord right now, I would say, yes. right? So yes. if you're a landlord, great time to be in the rental market. When you're someone who's looking for a house for your family, it's a great time to buy because the, the mortgage rates are still historically low. And I'm just telling you, the rental market is so high. To go rent the same exact house versus purchasing it, when you look at where your mortgage payment would be, inevitably, your mortgage payment's going to be less than the rental payment. Absolutely. But that brings me to my next question. Jay, Jay Talenda, EXP Realty. I know you've worked with a lot of investors, a lot of investment properties. Let's say I want to get into investments a little bit. What is something I really need to be looking for when I buy my first investment property? Uh, affordability and age as well. Um, one thing that creeps up on landlords is the cost of maintenance and repairs. So if you have an older home and it has not been updated, um, those costs can, can eat up your return pretty quick. Um, you also look for your area and, you know, really whatever sweet point um, of pricing you're looking for uh, as far as your return um, and stability of, of, the, of the tenants. Yeah. Would you ever invest in uh, condominium? I personally would not. I do have clients that uh, favor condominiums. Um, in the last recession, I found some challenges here in Central Florida in which uh, people were in default and, and that caused great strain on the HOAs and it skyrocketed the sure. dues and it caused limitations. So. I like condominiums because most of the maintenance is handled by the HOA, but that also comes with the downside. But if I'm not mistaken, even a lot of times, or at least a few years ago, I know you couldn't even get a loan on a lot of these condos because of those issues, right? That's correct. Yeah. So what happens if they have, they have to qualify, HOAs have to qualify for their financing. And if they fall below certain thresholds, either with delinquencies or their budgets, um, financing is cut off. Uh, but that's recovered over the past couple of years. What about townhomes? Uh, townhomes, you can get the financing for. But would you recommend your clients who first investment property is a townhome okay? A townhome is good for a first investor. All right. Absolutely, gotcha. Talk to me a little bit about for sale by owner because you know people come in my law firm all the time and say, you know, I don't want to pay a real estate agent. I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to put a sign in the front yard and I can sell this thing. I'm not paying these grimy real estate agents. <laughs> and I always tell them the same thing: you need to be very cautious about that. Number one. There's a lot of legal issues going on. This is a huge transaction for you. you. You need to make sure you have someone who has done this before help you through the process. But number two, do you really think if you're doing a for sale by owner, you're going to get maximum value in that sale? Well, I find that interesting. You know, since the recession, we our compliance in the real estate industry throughout has just um, been very intense. So even if you sold property 10 years ago, um, it's a different game today and a lot more risk. But I also find it interesting because when a buyer goes to purchase a for sale by owner, you have to ask yourself why. Why would they drive themselves around and go make their own appointments and go view a property on their own? Right. They're doing it to save the commission as well. <laughs> well, you can only say only one person gets to save the commission right. unless you split the baby. Right. So, uh, you know, it kind of defeats everybody's motive in that way. And it's, it is very dangerous. And all it takes is one lawsuit, um, one error, one oversight. And there goes that profit. Yeah, gotcha. If you have any questions at all about anything you've seen on the show today, give us a call. 407-205-0400. You can also ask me any question. And this is all free, of course, at my website. 
youhavepower.com. Now, Phil, I think we're going to show off a couple of uh, Jay Talinda's listings here as well. Let, let's start over at 3407 Wild Myrtle Court, uh, Jay. This is down in Windermere as well. I know we've yes. spent a lot of time already in the southwest uh, corner of, of our great city here of Orlando. Tell me a little bit about Wild Myrtle. Where is this? So Wild Myrtle is in the town of Windermere proper. Um, it has access to the Lake Butler chain of lakes. It's a four bedroom, three and a half bath, just under 3,400 square feet. One of the unique things is it sits on an acre of, of land. Uh, and it has an in-ground pool, uh, fully landscaped, and we completely renovated the entire property. Um, we put it on the market at 599 uh, Right now, it's one of the lowest priced properties in Windermere. Windermere is known for its schools, its chain of lakes, its golf courses, um, dining, access to downtown, or really anywhere. Yeah. yeah, as Shane mentioned earlier. Let's say I am selling a property and I'm going to do some renovations to try to increase the value of my home. Are there certain parts of the house that I really need to focus on that are going to raise the value of my house more than others? Well, curb appeal is always important. Uh, that's what gets somebody in the door. And then you have the kitchen and bathrooms. I'd say those carry the most weight. Uh, but it takes all kind. Of, it takes the detail. If I had to say anything, you can remodel the kitchen and bathrooms. Um, but if you're not detailed in how you do it, then you, you really kind of cut that corner. Once they get to the backyard, um, it needs to just flow. We've heard rumors over the last, I don't know, year and a half, maybe even two years here in Central Florida that there's been, it's been such a seller's market that buyers would have to come in and, and pay over asking price and that sort of thing. Has that toned down some? It has. It started to soften up earlier this year. When I say soften, I don't mean... Um, uh, as as if the market's crashing or anything like that, but uh, there's there's been a lot of activity, and of course it, it slows down a little, um, especially due to season with the holidays. But we still have properties that are selling above list price um, even now. Now we're going to give you some predictions on what we think the market's going to do in Central Florida here during the real estate roundtable at the end of the program. But before we do that, Jay, I know we have one more property I wanted to show because I wanted to give the audience here a little bit of an idea of some properties outside of Orlando because you can invest anywhere. You don't have to invest just here in Orlando. So we're going to step uh, out to St. Petersburg area. This is 6190 51st Street South. Is this a fixer-upper, or is this is this one already rehabbed? This is a fixer-upper. This, uh, yes, this is actually lender-owned. It's it's five bedrooms, four bathrooms, uh, a little over 3,400 square feet on a quarter of an acre, uh, with the in-ground pool, lush landscaping. It's in a neighborhood called uh, Bayway Isle. It's a very exclusive neighborhood in St. Pete. Uh, obviously, you have the water right there, and this is coming soon. It's not listed yet. Um, it does need cosmetic work. This would actually be very good as a second home um, or even short-term rental right. um, because, uh, because of its waterfront location. When you say lender-owned, what do you mean exactly? Uh, this property was acquired by way of foreclosure, and um, it is vacant, and it's, it's had deferred maintenance to it. So if I'm looking for a home, whether it's investment or I want it to be my primary home, should I be looking for lender-owned properties? I mean, can I get a steal on those or what? Uh, the lenders are pretty sophisticated. So okay. when they price properties, they use three different values. They'll have two brokers and appraiser, and, and they have all of the data uh, that any other seller would have, in addition to hundreds of photos of every aspect of the property. So you can get a fair deal, um, but it's not going to be a steal. Right. Um, it's, it's a fair deal, and often they provide financing, uh, which helps that process. You know, we hear rumors all the time about really nightmares of short sales taking six months, nine months, two years to really complete. And then the buyer gets frustrated, of course, because they want to buy the house, you know, whether it's an investment or they want to live there. They don't want to wait six months to a year right. to complete the short sale. But let's say I'm buying a lender owned property. So one that's already been foreclosed on now Bank of America or Nation Star, whoever actually owns it. How long does that transaction take? Oh, typically you'll have a response from the lenders. So, they sometimes have a, a hold period where they will allow, say, 10 days to a, accumulate the offers and then review. But once they begin the review period, it takes two, maybe three days to get a response from them. And then after that, you can close when the buyer's ready. Jay Talinda, EXP Realty. Thanks for being here, buddy. You're going to stick around for the real estate roundtable as well, I hope. We have some important questions from the audience. And if you have any questions that you would like us to address right here on the show, you can give us a call, 407-205-0400. Or you can ask us these questions, and we will use them on the air next week. 
by going to my website, www.youhavepower.com. Now it's time for the Real Estate Roundtable. Each week on the Real Estate Roundtable, we're here to answer your questions directly on the air. You can call 407-205-0400 or go to my website, youhavepower.com. Joined today by Jay Talenda, EXP Realty, and Shane Croft with Croft Real Estate. Gentlemen, thank you for being here, by the way. So glad to be here. So the first question that we have, and I think this is an important one because I've been hearing a lot about this lately. It's from Pilar in Lake Mary. She says... What is this open door, and should I try it? Shane Croft. It's a good question. Uh, We're beginning to see that name around. Uh, It's not quite what people think it is sometimes. The short story is they are what's called an iBuyer, which means they will offer you quickly an offer on your home and close quickly. So if I need to sell my home in two weeks for some odd reason, they do that. Now, typically, that offer is quite a bit below market. So, and there are fees attached that aren't necessarily disclosed initially to where the seller nets quite a bit less than if they had the time to wait for a traditional sale. All right. So Tyson in Orlando asks, will the market increase in 2019? Jay Talenta. I would think that it, it'll increase probably at the same rate that it has been. Um, and be, but yes, I see an increase coming. So we're continuing. We, we've been increasing what dramatically over the last couple of years, or is it just kind of ticked up, Jay? Uh, there was a dramatic increase from say 15 uh, through 18, and then it started to taper off a little bit, um, part due to low inventory. So, uh, but yes, it's still increasing. Good deal. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Two good friends of mine, excellent Realtors, real estate agents. Uh, Please call them if you have any questions. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions whatsoever about any of the listings you've seen today or anything we've talked about on the program whatsoever, give us a call, 407-205-0400, or visit our website, www.youhavepower.com. I'm attorney Justin Clark, and I'll see you right back here next week on You Have Real Estate. If you have a question you would like answered on an upcoming episode of You Have Real Estate with attorney Justin Clark, call 407-205-0400. attorney Justin Clark. If you have problems with the IRS, you already know they can garnish your wages or levy your bank accounts. But did you know they can now take away your passport? If you owe back taxes or have unfiled returns, call me right now for a free consultation.